Hello everybody. We've done a podcast uh, recently on food of the bass. So what we're going to do today is um, tackling up for bass. So we've got the bait and now we just need, you know, the rods to do it. So my stretch of the coast, it's not tied round here. And do, do people do, do generally a lot of surf casting? So you can use you can use a surf caster with a traditional way you would like fish for codlin or something like that. We have a look up straight to a lead, shock lead straight to a lead, and have a snood off that, and just fish how you would fish on the cod. And a lot of the time the bass grab the bait and with the tide they just move off and hook themselves, and your rod tip like that. You can you can, you can do that. Um, you can also rig up a uh, like a run and trace. And do do something a little like that, almost like um, a, a, a boat fishing uptide rig. You do off a boat. We'd have a tiny little ziplock boom which slides, and you have a little clip. Clip your lead on, bead, big swivel, and then maybe twenty pound amnesia, maybe about a metre long, something like that, seven hundred fifty mil long, to like a three o hook, and then bait up with whatever you're going to bait up for your bass. Clip the hook over the wires of one of your leads so it hangs and, and it's away and literally a little 30, 30 yard flick which is the, the prime zone and just and fish it like that so you've got a um, you've got a run a run and rig to assist with the bass so he doesn't feel anything when he picks up the bait and moves off he's got less chance of you know, leave a bit of a bow in the line maybe or just enough and when he moves off, you'll just get your rod tip will just give a wank wank like this sort of thing, not like a duck, but doesn't sound like a duck, but it's almost like quite a pronounced. So if you're really full on and focused, just watching your rod tip, you'll see something different. You'll think, "Hang on, that's a fish." Something will tell you in your mind, say, "Hang on, fish is there. Fish has grabbed it." So all you do in that situation, just literally grab your rod and a, just a firm strike, not berserk, firm, and you should have him on. Or sometimes you'll be in that situation with that rig and the rod will just pull over and um, you'll know you've got him on. So there's two there's two methods of fish with surf caster. The other one um, you can use um, for like ledgering is maybe using a slightly sort of um, softer rod with a smaller lead um, and fish almost like the Carolina rig, just, just roll it on the bomb. So it's, a, so, it's a, so it's a one ounce bomb, two ounce bomb with a hole in it. Thread that through your, your shock leader onto a bead swivel, then have about 750 mil hook length um, to like two, three or hook, peel a crab and just flick it out 20 yards and just hold the rod and just move with it, with, with, with the tide. You can do that. You can fish that way with a live sand eel on the bottom. Um, you know, and it's, um, you know, if you're fishing off harbour walls, you could use the same sort of kit, but with a float, a bit like fishing for rest with a float, but just have a live bait on. You can do that. Um, so they're the different um, techniques you can use. Obviously lure fishing as well. We're just using a spinner, spinning rod. Um, and obviously with the, you know, with the depending on what size of bass it is, or if it's, a, if it's a good bass, a medium bass, or a small bass, whatever, you just take your time with it and just coach it in. And when you get it into the surf, you know, don't panic too much about getting up the beach. Just keep it tight and use the use use what once you get a big a sort of a, one of the big swells comes in, try and pull it up with that. Strand it, and then you want to quickly nip down to it and either just put your thumb inside its mouth and pull it up, or just grab hold of the leader. Keep an eye on it and just, and just pull it up. Or you could tail it out. You grab it by the tail and just slide it up the beach and how steep the beach is. Um, if you've got a mate with you, he might be able to help you land it if you're not used to landing them. But you don't want to be panicking in those stages. You want to be sort of um, as calm as anything almost. And almost like have the attitude of like, well, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. Do you know what I'm saying? I find if you panic in those moments, you can, lo you can lose it. Um, reminds me of salmon, when I first started salmon fishing in New Zealand. You sort of, it's like, oh my, I've never caught these before, I've never caught these before. And, um, you know, 
you sort of you, you can panic and make mistakes and you, you know you lose a fish. But you live and you learn. You, you, you're probably going to lose one, one or one or two, but you know there you go. Right, so tackling up for bass. So obviously, um, for me, the the more lighter tackle you can use, the nicer it is to use. Um, some people land their bass, you know, fishing off piers and rocks with like a landing net. Um, so scoop them out, so to speak. So if you fish on really light tackle, like eight pound line or something, or eight pound sort of leader to its mouth and all that sort of stuff, um, I was finding that the lighter you can go, the better. But that doesn't obviously leave you in in good um, condition for if you run into a real big one and there's snags down there. Do you know what I'm saying? So you've got to sort of, if you're fishing quite a rocky, kelpy sort of area, you might just want to have, fish light, but have the gear. To deal with something if it if it turns up. Remember, a ten pound bass is going to be an all on, um, you know, it's going to need a, a real, you know, um, wits about you to, to to land it. That's where the landing net might come in, or well, for a pair of drop net or something like that. So, um, so we spoke about the sliding rig, um, fishing on the bottom with a lead and it slides up and down. So when the bass picks up, you can't feel it and it'll move. It'll drift with with, with the tide. This that. Um, there's a rig where you can um, use like a um, have like a, a ring and then you fish you trace tie it to that with the hook and then above that you have like a, a loop down to a snood and a sort of a, a lead as well so it's almost a bit like a rotten bottom if you get snagged up that's a slight enough for it to snag up so a bit of a rotten bottom bottom bit as well we spoke about the pattern officer just now with sort of surf casting. Um, and um, hook sizes, you generally, um, when I'm fishing for bass, anything, I spoke about it a bit on the other podcast, maybe, I can't remember, but sometimes I use, if I'm using worm baits, I'll go to a size one, because I can pick off a, like a flatfish or two as well if they're there. If you use too big a hook, you miss out on those flatfish which are nibbling away at your bait, especially using worms. So a, a biggish bass, you can still land it on like a size one, something like as long as you take it easy and look, heave it in, so to speak. But I used to always fish for bass with like a size 2.0 hook, mainly sort of 3.0. Um, a 4.0 hook's fine. Um, like I say, a 5.0 hook in the mouth of like a six pound bass will look quite small. And usually they're just, they're just caught in the, the, the hook is just in the corner of the mouth. It's almost like he's picked up the bait, and as he's pulling away, and he's just it's, the bait slowly put being pulled back out of his mouth. And it's just that last corner of his mouth where he just gets hooked. And he goes, oh, oh. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's like it's um, yeah. I'm just trying to think. It doesn't really matter what sort of hook you get. Cassanian are really good. Mustad are pretty good. Um, Cox and Raw hooks are good. There's loads. There's loads on on the market. Uh, Cassamian would be my number one. And um, depending on what, if you're fishing live baits or not, you want want a treble. If you're fishing like a mackerel, when you put it for its nose, you want that treble. Usually, must add have a hook which has got a real big barb on it. it. Just helps to stop it from pulling out. And what you can do if you're fishing a mackerel on the surface with float gear, you can get a little bit of um, foam. And just put that over the hook, put it through the fish, and then put it over the hook, and and that won't come off for the bar, the barb. So it just you definitely gonna, the fish is going to stay on there. You see, you can do it with the sand eel as well. But if you're fishing really close in and calm conditions, you don't need to worry about it too much, you know. And the sand eel will just you know flutter around on the bottom, and the bass will just home home in on it. Um. So yeah, a bit about leads, um, float gear. You know, um, you just adjust the depth. I mean, it depends what bait you're using. I mean, bass will take stuff on the surface up to a meter, up to right on the bottom. Ideally, if you're fishing on the bottom, you want it just off the bottom so the little pests don't nick your bait and things like that. And so you don't sort of snag up. But if there's a lot of tide there, it'll try to just sort of pull it and you don't want to leave so much out that it's going to catch on the bottom. You want it up a bit and just let it drift round and just wind it in and just recast it in an area where you think you're going to sort of, if you're fishing off a pier or, or something like that, standard sort of floats, any of floats you can get, you make your own, you know, for, for all that sort of stuff. And obviously there's a spinning as well, 
tapping up for bass spinning, one of the most easiest forms, quickest angle with a bit of bait, just a rod, a reel, line, main line straight to the lure. Don't bother about a leader if you don't want to. And just a, like a, a metal Abu Tobi. Just just try that. They will take it. They will they will if they're this again, if the fish are there in front of you and they're in feeding mode, they will scoff into it. Just because you've got a 30 quid lure, don't make it one iota versus a bloody 299. One iota. You'd be surprised for what you can get for two pound fifty on some mail order companies. The quality of that metal lure is superb, and I've had bass whack into them, absolutely whack into a two pound fifty lure. So, you know, it's um, just trying to think of an example of one which would be a good one for you. Can't remember the bloody name of it. Uh, Veal's mail order. Go on, Veal's mail order. They've got they've got they've got a few on there, metal ones. Really, really good. And with the metals, you'll pick up other species as well. Um, lots of different species you can pick up. Flatfish will whack into it if you're close to the bottom. Um, cool fish, pollock, mackerel. As where the other the other lure, you will still get those fish on it, but the metal lure, the smaller metal lure, seems to pick off a few more species. You get a few more surprises, which is nice when you're out there fishing. You know, and that's what it's all about. Fishing is about being um, surprised, getting little surprises all the time. I mean, I was fishing off a patch of rough ground. I caught a um, near six pound bass, and the next few casts after that, I caught a nice cool fish on the same lure. I also wasn't expecting it, and it's just one of those little sort of special days, you know, where where everything sort of simply went right. And before that, I had probably had five to ten rubbish days where nothing went right. Do you know what I'm saying? But you're looking for that one sort of, you're, you, you're looking for all the stars to align, you know, and they don't always align straight away. Very rarely they sort of, you know. I mean, I went fishing yesterday and I, I, and I, didn't, I didn't get anything. So it's just, it's just what, what, what it's like. Right, I want to keep the short and concise because I, I don't want this to get too, too boring. So metal lures, plugs are good. Um, Mini sort of red gills are good. Fish them on a float on the surface, put a little bit of foam, keep them up. Um, trout flies, try experiment with trout flies. Um, experiment with spinning and having a small sabiki just above it. So if there's any mackerel about or sand eel, they'll grab that or put a couple up there. Put a couple of trout flies above your metal lure. So if, and if you're running near the bottom, you can pick up some bait fish as well as you're, as you're spinning the bass. Sometimes the bass will even grab the small over the over the metal, it's bizarre. Seriously, it's un unbelievable. So the a good rod and reel. I can't emphasise enough. Pay the money and go the extra yard with reel, definitely and rod. It's just so much more fun to use. Makes you just want to pull it out of the bag and have a go with it, casting and all that. Um, so yeah, fly fishing. You can um, also another on, on on techniques. You can stray line if you're fishing in a kelpie area. Just fish a spinning rod line straight down to your, your hook, say 4-0, put on a soft crab, okay, with a load of cotton around it, and you just use the weight of that, calm day, and just flick it out 20 yards, 10 yards, and just leave it, and just leave it sitting there, just holding the rod at a certain time in the time. There's all, there's all these different sort of techniques. So that's, that's tackling up for bass, a quick fire sort of chat with sort of, you know, different techniques you, you can sort of use. And um, and yeah, and you just need the sort of the tides. Pick the best tides to coincide with the conditions. If they're if they're more extreme conditions, it suits more like a surf caster with bait anchored on the bottom. Um, if the water's still clear and it's quite rough, you could wade out a little bit and do spinning for spinning for bass. Um, if you're off a pier or something, you might want to use a float and and, and fish fish a live bait or something like that. The options are endless, and that's the beauty of it. Um, so yeah, you just need the fish to be there in front of you. And that's and that's, 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 that's as simple as that, really. All right, I will see you later, guys, and I will speak to you later. Please subscribe. Catch you later, guys.